Yo everyone, welcome back to Caleb the Video Maker 2. So in the last video, this is where we left off. We are in the process of creating an animal dating site, and we have a table to store all of the animals that sign up, and a table to record all of the available species. And then, the animal can reference one of these species. But you know, that's really not enough for an efficient dating site. The animal needs a way to say other species that they are interested in, right? So we need to create an interests table. Why do we need a third table? Well, it's because one animal can be interested in multiple species and an individual species can be labeled as an interest from multiple animals. Therefore, we have a many to many relationship. And you know, many to many relationships don't go well with databases. So we break this up into two one to many relationships. So this becomes an intermediary table. And this kind of breaks that tension between the two tables. By now, you're probably an expert on the create table statement, so I'm not going to waste your time explaining it all. <laughs> but now I'm wasting your time talking about how I'm not going to explain it all. Oh. And the two columns in here are literally just going to be a species ID and an animal ID. That's because we are associating one species with one animal. We'll start with the animal ID, though, because an animal is interested in species. It just makes more sense to put it that way. You could flip it and say, here are the animals interested in this species, but this is more clear to me. And then we are also going to have the species ID. Now, what data types are these going to be? Well, as you learned in the last video, the foreign keys always need to match the data type of the column we're referencing, which means we need to make these both int. We are also going to make them not null, but we are not going to make them unique because that would defeat the purpose of this table. The point of this table is to allow an animal to be interested in multiple species. But if we made the animal unique, for example, then we could only have this animal in this table one time, which would limit the animal to only one species. So each individual interest is going to get one row. That means an individual animal ID might be in here 20, 30, 40 times, <laughs> depending on, you know, the character of the animal. <laughs> Now what about the primary key? Well, we've talked about this. There's two ways we could do a primary key for this table. The first is to have a compound primary key. The second is to create an ID column. And this would be a unique ID to describe a specific interest. Now these both have their ups and downs. The ups for the compound is that we don't need to add any columns, but the downside is that it becomes more complex. Anytime we wanna talk about this individual interest, we're going to have to have a compound foreign key, which that just makes things more complicated. The benefit of this column is that we can avoid that. Now when we reference an individual interest, all we have to do is have an individual ID as the foreign key. To expand our learning, I am going to go with this route. So we are going to create a composite primary key. Now how do we do this? We can't just add it to a column like this. That's because this is a column level constraint. It can only talk about this individual column. So this is a problem. We actually have to add the constraint at the table level. So that means we add it as if it's its own column. So we just come past here and add a comma, and then we just say primary key, and then in parentheses we can actually add both columns. So we could say animal ID, species ID. So that is how you create a compound or composite primary key. Last thing, I wanted to add a drop table statement for this table. So let's go up to the top. And one thing about the drop tables is you always want to try to delete the children first. Because for example, if we try to drop this table, here I'll show you. You can see it says it's referenced by a foreign key constraint. That's because we didn't use the on update clause when we created this foreign key. That means we need to try to delete all the children first. So this new table, it actually references both tables. So it's like the child of all children. <laughs> so we need to drop it first. So let's add a line here, drop table if exists, interests. All right, so everything should be good. Let's run it and make sure it all works. And there you go. Now let's go to our object explorer and find that database, subscribe, go to the tables, and then go to interests and then columns, you can see that they're both labeled the primary key. But if you go to keys, you can see it has this ugh, disgusting name. It's this gross. All right, we need to fix that. So in the next video, we are going to learn how to name our constraints. <laughs> so yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was useful. If you need to look over this, here's the entire code. And yeah, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next one. And be sure to subscribe.